In this series of videos, we're going to compose and process a narrowband image taken with H-alpha, oxygen-3, and sulfur-2 filters. With these filters, we'll create a color palette commonly known as the Hubble palette, named after the team of Hubble Space Telescope photographers that introduced it. In the Hubble palette, each emission line is assigned a primary color, sorted by wavelength. So the oxygen-3, which is at the wavelength of 500 nanometers, is assigned the blue channel. The H-alpha, which is at 656 nanometers, is assigned the green channel. And the sulfur-2, at 674 nanometers, is assigned the red channel. To compose the color image, we open Channel Combination and click and drag the image tabs to their corresponding colors. To create a new image, we have to apply the process globally using the Apply Global button. This means that the process isn't applied to any of the existing images, but creates a new color image. If we now open STF and apply an auto stretch to this image, in most cases the nebula will look completely green. This happens because the H-alpha emission in a nebula is usually much stronger than the oxygen-3 emission and particularly the sulfur-2 emission. As the H-alpha emission is brighter, the nebula takes on the color assigned to that emission line, which is green. The other two emissions aren't visible. We therefore need to optimize the visibility of the other emission lines. To help you understand the color correction process, first let's look at how color calibration works in astrophotography. Normally, if an image has a chromatic deviation like this, it's because the light intensity in the objects is not the same in the three primary colors. For example, this galaxy looks red because in the image it's much brighter in the red than in the blue. What the white balance operation does is equalize the brightness of the object across the three primary colors. This gives the object a neutral overall color. Keep in mind that the chromatic deviation of a photograph is also determined by the color of the sky background. Imagine we have an image of a reddish object. The light from the object is superimposed on the light from the sky background in each of the three channels. So if the sky background is very green, when we add the reddish light from the object, we might get a very yellow image. To correct this, we need to make the three sky background pedestals the same across the three primary channels. By doing this, we get a neutral sky background, and the objects have the chromatic deviation characteristic of the optical system used, without a white reference. Once we've balanced the sky background, we need to balance the color of the objects by making the white reference neutral in the three primary channels. We're applying this color calibration to a broadband image, and this procedure has typically only been applied to this image type. But any color image is basically an image with three primary colors and will require a color correction. So, whether you're using broadband or narrowband filters, the color will need the same corrections. If the object is much brighter in the green than in the blue and red, we need to configure the white balance to equalize the brightness of the nebula in the three primary channels. Also, here the sky background looks a little blue, so although this is a narrowband image, it has the same color deviations that a broadband image might have. In a broadband image, we can apply a color calibration with SPCC and use a spiral galaxy as the white balance. But that won't work here. Every time we apply a process, we must think about the documentary objective of that process. And in this case, we want to optimize the visibility of the three emission bands within the nebula.
If we want the brightness to be the same in all three bands, we need to set the nebula itself as the white reference. In other words, the white reference is an intrinsic part of the image. We can do this with color calibration. To apply an intrinsic white reference, we need to select an area of the image as a reference. To do this, we create a preview that covers the nebula and set it as the region of interest. Next, we create another small preview as the background reference. We don't really have any sky background here, so the best we can do is select one of the darkest areas of the image. Now we must uncheck the Structure Detection box. If this option is enabled, the Structure Detection will only detect the small structures, in other words, the stars. This is good if we want to neutralize the overall color of all the stars in the image, but here we want to evaluate the light from the whole nebula. We therefore need to disable this option. Now we apply the Color Calibration process and reapply the Auto Stretch. Now we can see all the nebula's different emissions because the brightness is the same in all three primary colors. With this simple step, we've optimized the way the colors are displayed inside the nebula. Unlike PCC and SPCC, color calibration doesn't neutralize the sky background. It only does the white balance. When using this tool, we therefore always need to adjust the sky background separately using background neutralization. In this case, we're adjusting the sky background after the white balance, but we can also do the background neutralization first before we execute color calibration. The result will be the same. Also, even if we execute background neutralization first, in color calibration we must always configure the region of interest for the sky background. Remember. The image is still in a linear state and all these processing steps must be applied before we stretch the image.